And so with energy diagrams, as I said before, we have two types. We have exothermic and endothermic reaction diagrams. And so as mentioned in the earlier, the uh, endothermic, you see that the products are higher than the reactants. So this would be endothermic reaction diagram. When the products are lower than the reactants, this is exothermic. So here with NOCl, you see in the transition state, the nitrogen chlorine bond starts to elongate, the chlorine chlorine bond starts to form, and then when you form the products, you form a chlorine chlorine bond, and then you have two NO radicals. Now when we have NO and O3, at the transition states, the NO, one of the NO bonds elongates, and then you start to form an OO bond. And so over time, oh, excuse me, I got it backwards. One of the OO bonds starts to elongate, and then the NO bond starts to form. So this gets closer, this gets further away. And then you form NO2 and O2. So again, it's very important that you understand the difference between an endothermic reaction diagram and an exothermic reaction diagram. Endo products are higher than reactants. Exo products are lower than reactants. So for multi-step reactions, you can see multiple transition states. So every peak you see is referenced to a transition state. So what this would tell you is that this reaction has one, two, so excuse me, one, two, three states or three steps. And so each step has its own transition state. So step one, we go from A to C. Step two, we go from C to E. And then step three, we go to E to G. So you can have multiple steps in a energy diagram. But notice the energy difference of reactants and products still gives you the delta H. Now this C and E, or as we'll learn later on, are called reaction intermediates. And so you'll hear that term a lot, reaction intermediates get formed in one step and consumed in another step. And so C and E are intermediates in this three-step reaction. So on that note, we'll stop uh, here for today.